In the early 1900s, a board game based on real estate and economics was released to the American public, taking inspiration from other regional games, and arguably, some say it's just a reskinned version of the Landlord game by Elizabeth Maggie. This was a game of Monopoly, which hasn't changed much in the more than 80 years since it was first patented. The idea is for the player to increase their financial status by purchasing real estate while driving the other player to bankruptcy, an interesting form of play released during the Great Depression. On the board, there are different areas of property and investments that go with the color-coded houses. But the thing that stands out the most are the railroads. Just like in real life, these railroads provide the most gains within a play, building a steady cash flow and blocking competitors' geographical expansion. I began to think about the four railroads on the board, their significance, their history, and the why. Why did the makers of Monopoly include the Baltimore and Ohio, Pennsylvania Railroad, Reading Railroad, and a fictionalized short line out of Atlantic City? Why did these railroads become such important pieces to America's history? I'm Jose, and I'm searching for the history behind the famous railroads that became part of the game of Monopoly. Monopoly is a world-famous board game that's published by Hasbro, previously being sold by Parker Brothers, before becoming part of the company in 1991. And looking at the original patent of Monopoly from 1935 and the Landlord game from 1904, they almost have an identical layout. In the Landlord game, we have four railroads, with a railroad block in the middle of the board. In Monopoly's original patent, the four railroads were given a name, the B&O, Reading, Pennsylvania, and the Short Line. The game was based on Atlantic City, so the streets on the board are named after New Jersey's beach town. Charles Darrow, creator of Monopoly, laid out this blueprint to make Atlantic City the game's backdrop, due to his childhood memories and fondness of the beach resort. As a fellow resident of Pennsylvania, I can say firsthand that Atlantic City is one of the best getaways for residents who live in the state. So it's no wonder that Darrell would be most fond of Atlantic City, as this is a story to many of Philadelphia's residents. With that interpretation of the game came the railroad lines that would be most familiar with Darrell, and also Maggie, when she created the game in Arden, Delaware. These railroads have history that intersect with New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, and so many more places. And while America had other rail lines, the ones in Monopoly were truly unique. When visiting Baltimore, Maryland's largest city, the light rail, becomes one of the best forms of transportation, stemming from the concept of these trains. And to think how America's railroads turn into a sophisticated public transportation system found in metropolitan cities. In Maryland, we can thank its early history of railroads. The Baltimore and Ohio was the first steam-operated railway in America. The B&O pioneered transportation of common carrier freight and passengers, giving inspiration to modern metro systems and Baltimore's very own light rail. This excursion through the city takes us to a part of town that houses a train museum in the historic Mount Clare train station. This train station is the birthplace of America's railroad and the first railroad manufacturing complex in the country. The Baltimore and Ohio's history is preserved in the B&O Museum one of the largest collections of railroads in the world and the largest locomotive collection in America. Stepping inside the roundhouse, we're greeted by the amazing remains of the Baltimore and Ohio. This place is gorgeous. It's so fascinating. The displays are beautiful. When the roundhouse entrance to Mount Clare debuted in 1884, it was the world's largest circular building. And Mount Clare became the first passenger train station before the expansion of the roundhouse. Passengers would take excursions from Mount Clare to a station in Ellicott City, Maryland, riding the Baltimore and Ohio. 
The B&O was a massive railroad system that started with just 14 miles between the towns of Baltimore and Ellicott City. And to clarify just how big of a network the B&O had grown into, by 1915, it extended to more than 4,000 miles of track line from New York City to Chicago and St. Louis, building connections with cities that bordered the Great Lakes and stretching to places like West Virginia, further fueling the industrial growth of America. As I move around the museum, what I love seeing is the first iterations of the trains and how much they've evolved. And one of the reasons why the founders built such a titan of a rail system was to compete with the other Goliath of the East Coast, the Erie Canal of New York State. The Erie Canal was a 363-mile canal that stretched from the greater area of Albany to the exit point in Buffalo, New York, becoming the largest artificial waterway in North America. The residents of New York City were seeing booming business from Midwest and Western territories as products traveled through the Great Lakes to the canal and down the Hudson to New York City. What remains of the Erie Canal I mean, this is pretty much it. You're looking at it. At Buffalo, it's the tail end, and it just goes out into the Erie Harbor. Baltimore was the second largest American city at the time, with the founders of the Baltimore and Ohio wanted to increase the Western market share to grow the city's trade. In the museum, we're treated to so much historical train cars and train engines, preserving the history of the Baltimore and Ohio. During its peak, it connected 13 states. The founders of the Baltimore and Ohio, Philip Thomas and George Brown, wanted to prove that this form of transportation was more efficient and faster than the Erie Canal. And along with 25 bankers and merchants who were seeing stagnation in the port city of Baltimore, the project came to life in 1830. By the time Monopoly was created, the Baltimore and Ohio was one of the biggest names in American Railroad. It didn't connect with Atlantic City, but was a major competitor to the Pennsylvania Rail Line. As far as the existence of the B&O, it went into bankruptcy due to overexpansion and not having the funds to maintain the service. Eventually, it was acquired by the Chesapeake and Ohio Railway Company, which later formed the CSX Corporation, the trains we see all over America. So that gives some context to the inclusion of the B&O and the Monopoly Board. Its historical significance made it a unique choice for the game. These mechanical titans, I mean, they're the anchor to America's Industrial Revolution. While the Baltimore and Ohio earned its place on the Monopoly board, the first railroad to make it to the board was very familiar to Charles Darrow. Reading, Pennsylvania, a city not too far from Philadelphia, Reading is a city that's synonymous with railroads, and you'll find its trains all over Pennsylvania, like the Reading Blue Mountain and Northern Railroad. But the most famous was the Reading Railroad, originally called the Philadelphia and Reading. The Reading Line became a celebrity among railroads, cornering the growing coal market out of Pennsylvania, famous for its anthracite coal, the largest deposit of anthracite coal in the world, found in the regions of Scranton, Wilkesbury, and Hazleton. We're talking about trains, right? And here's the best example of one of those trains on the Monopoly board. The Reading Line eventually created a monopoly to the coal industry. It did create a monopoly. <laughs> and became the largest corporation in the world in 1871 with a $170 million market cap from its businesses in transporting anthracite coal, which translate to $4.2 billion in today's standards. 
And if you're not too familiar with anthracite coal, I live in the coal region where the black diamond was discovered. It contains the highest carbon content and fewest impurities, meaning it has more energy than regular coal because of its blue carbon, making it more efficient and a cleaner burning fuel. You can learn more about the anthracite story from Scranton to Wilkesbury, Jim Thorpe, the Lehigh Valley in Philadelphia, in my tour of Pennsylvania. The resources of anthracite coal made the Reading Line the first real conglomerate in the world. When the game of Monopoly was sold to Parker Brothers, the Reading Line was one of the biggest rail companies that existed, making it an icon on the Monopoly board. But it suffered a similar fate to that of Baltimore and Ohio. The company went bankrupt in 1971 and was sold to a government-owned not-for-profit corporation called Conrail. The decline of anthracite coal and competition for motor vehicles and air freight further burdened the once giant corporation. Throughout the United States, the American public has shown its interest in the work of improving the highway. As we look at the Monopoly Board, the other important railroad system was that of the Pennsylvania Railroad. The short line was mostly a fictional amalgamation of the many smaller lines found throughout America. The Pennsylvania Railroad was a major competitor to the Baltimore and Ohio, growing to more than 10,000 miles of track line. During its peak in 1882, the Pennsylvania Railroad was the largest railroad, transportation enterprise, and corporation in the world. And this brings the story full circle. This rail line was one of the few to gain entrance to New York City and make its way to Atlantic City, placing a stamp on the game board. The Pennsylvania Railroad would go on to carry 10% of America's freight and 20% of all its passengers. The idea of an in-state railroad also came from the fear of the growing canals. With the Erie Canal to the north and the Chesapeake and Ohio in areas like Washington, D.C., the port of Philadelphia was also threatened with stagnation similar to Baltimore. Railroads were clearly the future and a commission was put together in 1826 to map out a canal that would travel from Philadelphia through 300 miles of Pennsylvania's mountains, making its way to Pittsburgh. And if you've never taken a trip across Pennsylvania's terrain, you're in for a real awakening. Philadelphia lies on the Atlantic coastal plain and passes through Piedmont Plateau to get to Pennsylvania's Amish country, Lancaster. From Lancaster to the state capital, the region shifts to ridge and valley areas. By the time you reach the middle of the state, you'll encounter the Allegheny Plateau. This means that Philadelphia's lowest point above sea level is 10 feet and highest being 445 feet above sea level. Comparing that to Pittsburgh, where its highest elevation point is more than 1,200 feet. So building the canal had many complications, like being unsure if there would be enough water to keep the canal filled, 
So this led to the Pennsylvania Railroad. Commissioned in 1852, the Pennsylvania Railroad was able to travel all throughout the state and reduce a four day trip to just 13 hours. This proved to be a huge success in transportation, leading to further growth of the railroad. By the late 19th century, the Pennsylvania Railroad would expand its connections by purchasing many other competing lines, like Harrisburg, Lancaster, and Pittsburgh's rail lines. By the middle of the 20th century, a major disruption changed America's transportation. The invention of highways completely reshaped the way freight was moved across the country. As these highways would emerge, more vehicles would make the cross-country delivery, impacting many of the railroad systems. Around this time is when we start to see a decline. The Baltimore and Ohio was acquired in 1963, and the Reading Lines in 1971. In the late 1960s, a similar fate came to the Pennsylvania Railroad. The Pennsylvania Railroad was eventually integrated into the government not-for-profit company of Conrail, who also took over the Reading Lines, closing out the story of the once famous railroad companies that graced the game of Monopoly. I'm always so fascinated by the many stories of America's industrial history and how a game as simple as Monopoly can lead to so many trails of American pioneering. It built a connection with so many states from across the Union that almost never make it to the history books. If you want to learn more about Maryland, New York, and Pennsylvania's railroad history, you can stop by my page and check out the many series we've done on these states or simply learn more about the cities. I'm Jose, and I thank you for joining me on this search to discover the history behind the railroads on the Monopoly board. Until next time.